And so dramatic music. Do you play a band or orchestra instrument? Do you like learning? Have you ever thought to yourself, why does my trumpet smell? Ooh, yuck. Why does my violin peg keep slipping? Why shouldn't I use my trombone slide as a sword? Well, do we have the series for you? Hello, I'm Jen. And I'm Richard. And through this new series on this wonderful platform we call YouTube, we're going to be discussing the some of the do's, some of the don'ts of just instrument maintenance and um, other things, and it's going to be a really fantastic time here. Sure. It should be really fun. We should be able to, do, to go over all the things that you should do, shouldn't do. And of course, if we say anything that your teachers told you is wrong, trust your teacher first. Always trust your teacher. Yes. Consult them first. Yes. It is so important. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So what we're going to be covering is like a lot of stuff like instrument maintenance. Okay. So what does that cover? It covers like cleaning mouthpieces, mm -hmm. um, how to give your trumpet, trombone, whatever you play, a bath, which is very important. We're not your flute. Your no. brass instrument. We don't want to give a flute no, a bath. Don't give a flute a bath. <laughs> to be sad. Yeah. Um, and then also stuff like um, orchestra, so like how much rosin is too rosin, why does this stuff keep building up on the strings, um, and another thing is like that, a lot of suggestions that actually came from music teachers. Um, so we're very excited to be covering that with you. So one example we have for you is, is a trumpet mishap. If you ever get your mouthpiece stuck in your trumpet, Please don't try to pull it yourself. Either take it to your teacher to see if they have a mouthpiece puller or bring it into the store. We pull those for free. We don't charge you for that as long as we can get it out here. But most of the time we can. The problem is what happens if you try to actually pull it or, you know, dad grabs the, the robo wrench and grabs onto the thing and starts pulling on it. It actually could rip the whole trumpet apart. And then you're in for a much more major repair than it takes. So that's one of those things you want to always avoid is trying to pull those mouthpieces out of the trumpets or trombones or any brass instrument without with some professional help. I mean, we have a tool, it goes real easy. And we'll show you that later on in the series. Awesome. So, yes, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so to get right down to it, in this very first video, we are going to be showing you how to put your instrument together. And what is this instrument, Jen? Oh, I, you know, I, I first thought it was a penny whistle. <laughs> it could be a penny whistle. But you know what it isn't? A penny whistle. It's not a penny whistle. So what we have here is a fantastic looking flute. What? I know. So um, this flute, we're just going to start off with this. Um, so right here we have, this is called the body. So you'll probably take this out of your case first because you're like, oh, it's big and shiny. Okay, and then right here at the top, okay, that's where we put the head joint, which is this piece right here. And at the bottom, you see with this little ring right down here, that's where we're going to put the foot, okay? So a couple things to look at, okay? Um, at the top, you always have um, this little like connector joint here, this section. Um, and it usually has the brand name on it. And then you have all of these keys slightly in line with each other, okay? So we're gonna take the head joint and the head joint is going to go right onto that top and you just give a little tiny twist and push, okay? It's very important to twist only a little bit. You don't wanna crank it all the way around. Um, there's just no need for that, cool? And then now the next thing that you do, you see this little hole right here? Of course you do. Um, <laughs> this is the embouchure hole or the tone hole, and we are going to line it up. You can see the hole right with this first key. So this is pretty in line right here, and that's going to be amazing if we do that. Now we're going to take the foot and yoink right there, and then cool little trick. You'll learn to adjust it as, as your own hand grows, 
but little trick, align the little ball of the foot right in the middle of this key. And there you go. Now we have the flute and it's pretty amazing. Um, such a fun time if you are playing the flute. I play the flute, so of course there's no bias there. <laughs> so I have a question for you. So yes. people do come into the store here and they go, hey, Mr. Music Guy. That's what they call me. Hey, Mr. Music Guy, I need some lube to put my flute together. Oh. What do you think about that? Well, first I ask, is it hard to put together right now? Right. And then they're going to be like, yeah, so you know, like cork grease and stuff. Well, they do make a flute lube for that, but I always suggest the first three things. Okay, first you look at the head joint and then, um, you know, this the specialist or whoever you talk to will see if there's a little bit of a dent in there. That's going to be like number one thing to look yeah. for. And if there is, you need to send it to the shop, get it repaired, um, because that can actually scratch the inside. Right. The second thing is, yes. well, actually, <laughs> this is one right here uh, that we just pulled out was returned, but we need to check and see if there is any kind of like buildup or um, anything on the outside of the head joint or the inside of the body there, because, um, you know, you're just rubbing metals together, so it can sometimes um, cause a little bit of buildup. So you just take your cloth, take like a nice polishing cloth or something, and then just wipe it on the outside and the inside. And that usually does the trick. Okay. Um, I wouldn't use flute lube unless it's like very last resort and even just like a little like... Yeah, if, if it's not going together well, there's probably something yeah. wrong. So yeah, you yeah. Better, better have it checked out. But, yeah. yeah. But mainly always just clean it. Just yeah, wipe it well, always. And you should yeah. wipe it down after you're done playing. Yes. Right? Yep. And, and then of course, but we'll get into that later on in the series on how to clean the flute. Yes. Better as we move forward. Fantastic. So there's the flute. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> oh my gosh. And what's Richard? in that case? What is that? <laughs> it's not a penny whistle. <laughs> it's not a penny whistle. No, it's not. We don't have penny whistles. It's a square penny whistle? It's a square penny whistle. So <laughs> this is a clarinet. So clarinet comes in five parts. Uh, so much like the flute, um, it does come into pieces. And am I putting this one together? Or who's yes. doing Am I pretty? Yeah. Okay, well. We have the bell. Ooh. Yeah. Then we have two body parts. Ooh. Ooh. And we have a barrel. That is the barrel. And a mouthpiece. So. And how you put the clarinet together. So you take the bottom joint here, which is the only one which will fit in the bell. And the way that I've always done it is you press the keys down and hold the keys so they're not going to bend anything. And you just slightly twist it together. Now there is cork grease if you do need to grease these corks to get it together. Once again, we'll go into this in more depth as we go along in the series. But for today, this one's all looped up, ready to go, so it's pretty simple. We then take the upper joint, the same thing here, we're going to push down those keys, those keys there, and we're going to twist it together. Now, the thing with this, is there's a fancy key called the bridge key, which is that guy right there. We need to make sure that, that is lined over the key below it. So when you push down this key, those keys go down. If it's on the right place, it won't go down right. Next piece to go on is the barrel. And we can just grab it in the same place and twist that on. And then the mouthpiece. We're not going to go into read things right now. But the reed will then go on to the mouthpiece, and then you have a whole clarinet just like that. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, so five parts, yes? So five parts, yes. fantastic. Um, so what, what would happen if you didn't press this key down and put it together? Well, what you can actually, happen? if you don't press this key down while you're putting it together, this bridge key can possibly get bent because it's going to run into that key on the bottom. Oh my gosh. So if I go like here, you see how it's flat there, and if I just flip it around, it could bend. And so you don't want that to happen because those keys are very critical in the uh, workings of the thing. So it is amazing. If you bend any one key, the whole thing stops working correctly. So you really want to try to avoid bending keys. So, lost ligatures. Fantastic. Wow. Clarinet. Right. What an amazing species. What an amazing species. Five pieces. It's a beautiful thing. Same way to take it apart. Just pull it apart. Gently. Oh. Yeah. 
And how do you know where each part goes? Well, they only fit one way in the case. And the nice thing is the case is kind of made, so it looks like the impression of a clarinet. So you've got the big part here that has the key on the, on the thumb rest on the back of it. And then you've got that joint there. And the barrel goes there. So it actually goes in really nicely. Oh. Cases are very well designed. Amazing. So there's that. So, saxophone. Fantastic. I'm going to block all of your vision from this whole thing here. <laughs> I'm just getting out the pieces. <laughs> there, we'll go like that. Okay, fantastic. You blocked me. All so. right. So, look at all the parts to the saxophone. We got this one big, huge body piece. We have this smaller piece called the neck. Okay, and then we have the mouthpiece as well. It's in this little bag. So let's start with these three. So the first thing you'll notice, if you just pick up the body, okay, there's this little thing up top where you think that the neck would go, but um, you always have a cap right up in here. So it's just a little plastic cap. What does that cap do? Well, this cap actually prevents from this top part from like bending or getting morphed and stuff whenever, um, you know, it's in the case or you're pull, uh, you, you know, whenever it's in the case. <laughs> um, just to make sure that whenever we put the neck in, it goes in nice and smooth. Ta -da! That was easy to put together. Yes, it really, really was. Yeah. So basically, we're almost there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to align the neck up. Um, with the back of the saxophone, and then your teacher will help you adjust where the neck is and where you should be playing. So, because um, it can be easily moved from side to side. Um, so then we want to make sure that that neck. So we want to make sure that the neck stays um, in place once you have it adjusted to where you are. So we're just going to tighten this little screw right here, not too much. Okay, we don't need to like crank it or anything, but just enough to where you feel it's nice and tight, so that way it doesn't really move. Cool. Now, a couple things to, I'm gonna push this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> a couple things to think about um, whenever putting on the neck is that you wanna make sure that you handle this nice and delicately. So it's always good to grab um, just right around here to just brace it. Um, you don't really wanna like pull on it this way or anything because that can easily bend. Um, so with this key down here, um, this little lever, um, you want to make sure that you don't like squeeze it up, bend it inside this way, um, because that is super critical for the playing of this accent to be right where it is. So we're gonna put it on back here. Do, 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 do. Beer, beer. And there it is. So now, oh my gosh. The mouthpiece is going on. What? So the mouthpiece is going on right up top here. We're just going to put it on, give a little tiny twist, a little bit of push. It doesn't need to go all the way down to the cork, um, but just enough so that way you know it's not going to slip off. Cool? And your teacher will tell you how to uh, adjust it as necessary once we get uh, started playing. Now it looks so. like it comes with a beautiful piece of jewelry. Oh my gosh, it's the best jewelry that I've ever seen in my whole life. So, what's that for? <laughs> so that... <laughs> so that is for, uh, well, it's the neck strap. Okay? Oh! Uh, yeah! It's the neck strap, so, so it's probably... Yeah. It goes around your neck, I would guess. It goes around your neck! Well, that's that's yeah. unique! And what's really cool about this neck strap, um, you'll see that it has a clip. Um, so you can attach it directly to the saxophone. If you can see it here, we have this little tiny loop. Okay, it's not connected to any other key. It is just a single loop. We just clip it right in there. And then guess what? You can play the saxophone now. <laughs> now that's not really designed to hold the saxophone for you, right? Oh gosh. Because you no. don't want to have that much weight hanging on your neck, no. right? You still have to be, you know, you know, man up and or woman up and, and grab the saxophone and, and, and hold it. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. We yeah, need to you, make sure. Yeah, you, you don't want to do that because that'll hurt it. your neck. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just there um, just for safety's sake because if you lift this thing, it's probably one of the heavier yeah. instruments. Yeah. yeah. You know you know that that instrument weighs more than a trombone? Oh my. Isn't that God. amazing? You but would the think, trombone looks so big. I know, it's so big, but no. It's actually that that instrument weighs more. Amazing. Isn't that? Yeah. 
Cool. Well, think, think she didn't want to know. That is the saxophone. That's awesome. And we're just going to unclip this neck strap. Put it back away. Put it back away. Yep. Just gently twist off the mouthpiece. Put it back away. Yes. And then we're going to unscrew the neck. Fantastic. Gently grab it. Thank you. Thank you. And then what's so important is that you get this little black cap right back in the saxophone. Now, now if you run an instrument for Bright Music Center, which, which you should do, um, but if you do, uh, all those come with, all the saxophones we rent come with those. So, so know this now that if you rent it from us, it comes with those. So when you bring it back and it's missing, and we say, hey, you're missing that piece. Yeah, you went you went out of here. <laughs> so because it is very critical to keeping the saxophone safe. Yes. But so we so want to make sure that you are playing to the best of your ability. Yes. Hold on a second. There we go. Yay! All right, so we're done with the woodwinds, right? Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> How about this? Oh my gosh. What is this? Is it a penny whistle? It's a rectangular penny whistle. It's a rectangular penny whistle. <laughs> oh, okay, so this is a trumpet. It looks so beautiful. It does look beautiful, doesn't oh, wow. it? Yeah, this is one of the Bach trumpets. One of the last American manufacturers of instruments here. So this is, uh, this is cool. So as far as putting a trumpet together, this is where it gets really difficult. Okay, there's two pieces. There's your trumpet. And there's your mouthpiece. There. What? Okay. Yep. <laughs> that is it. That is it. That's all That's there is it. to it. That's simple. Now, one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to go, oh, my mouthpiece is in. Don't do that. Because that will help your mouthpiece get stuck. So you just want to put it in with a little twist, and that's all there is to it. There's really, really nothing else to it. The only other thing that I'll say about trumpets that's important is when you place them down, you make sure you place them down this way, because if you see this part right here, that is a second vowel slide, that if you put it on the other side, will actually end up belt bending the valve casing. And then this will stick, and you won't be able to play. So. Oh, man. Yes, and then you'll have to come in and get another trumpet. Or get it fixed. Yeah. 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 That's not fun. No, just no. just put it down right and you're good. Yeah. So that's how the trumpet works. Fantastic. So wow. how do you take it apart? Um, let me see. Oh, you take the mouthpiece and you take the mouthpiece out. That's all there is to it. Very simple. So, what if you play the baritone or French horn? It's the same thing. It's the same it's, thing. You just take it's the, the mouthpiece thing. out of the bag, you put it in the receiver, and you're ready to go. Fantastic. Amazing. It is amazing. So that's how the trumpet works. Great. There, I'm good. See? Everything is wonderful. Here. Everything Black is wonderful. Brass land. Brass land. Brass land. All right. Now, we have one more left. One more left. Yeah, it's over there. No, my name's not Grace. No, your name's not Grace. <laughs> no, I'm not Grace. <laughs> you know, my, my, my nieces, when they were little, they would be playing these games that they would pretend that they were for princesses. And my sister would go, you know, one day, all this will be yours, pointing at the window. And my niece goes, what, the curtains? <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with a really bad English accent, too. And they were like five. <laughs> so Sorry. Adorable. It is adorable. Like, they're twins, too. <laughs> they still are twins. The oh. <laughs> stop. Wow, what do we have here? No, this is the actual full-size. It's a slide size, penny whistle. Full-size slide penny whistle. <laughs> it's a trombone. <laughs> really? Yes. Okay, so how do we put together the trombone? Well. Because it looks like there's more than, I mean, it looks like somebody broke it. Yeah, it does look a little broken. It's not. So, <laughs> what we're going to do is take out the bell. Okay. And then we're going to put it over here because this is here, very Here, I'll large. get the slide out for you. How about okay, that? Okay, thank you. Sure. Wow. Check out that slide. Awesome. So two main parts and then we have the mouthpiece. 
Um, and now a couple important things, we're just gonna start right from the top, is that whenever you pull out the slide, you wanna make sure that you do it like pretty evenly, okay? Pull it out because if you just, um, depending on the case too, if you just yank it out in the middle, um, it will tend to just kind of bend. So we just right. wanna make sure that we're, we're pulling out the right parts and not really just yanking it, right? right. Yes. I agree. Very important. Um, so, what we're going to do, we're going to take the slide and we're going to look here at the parts of the slide. Um, so, right here, you see we have a little like not shiny part. Okay, that's the part that's going to connect to the other piece. And then we have this part. Okay, this part is where the mouthpiece goes. Boop, right in. Fantastic. Boop, very good. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then we're also going to look here. This little slidey bit where the mouthpiece goes in, this is the slide lock, okay? So it's really important. We want to make sure that that slide is locked if we're not playing it. No, all trombones do have a slide lock. Now, yes. some manufacturers, though, do make a slide lock that is hidden. This one you can actually see where the lock is, but there's certain manufacturers, namely Bach, that makes it so this part is actually hidden inside so you can't mm -hmm. see it. But it's still there. Yeah, and it's always good to just double check and be like, boop, okay, it's locked. <laughs> right. So, um, so we have it locked, and now we are going to just carefully maneuver around this table. Do I need a weird sound? That's good. <laughs> it is backwards. <laughs> I'm a flute player. I'm a trombone. So... I was a trombone player. You know, when I was in high school, I played trombone, and you know, I went to Blackhawk, and you know, whole school, and um, the bleachers in the in the uh, old football stadium used to be open, right? So during one of the football games, my trombone actually tumbled down through the stands and like destroyed the slide. It actually fell down and then fell down. It was gravel underneath there and all that. Yeah, gotta be careful. Trombones are- Oh my gosh. Yeah, why aren't you being hard on stuff? Yeah. It is, but anyways, go ahead. Gotta love your instrument. Oh, I did, I, I love my instrument. I got yelled at, oh jeez, oh, that God. was not good. So. So we're back. So <laughs> Okay, so what I just did, um, I looked at the instrument, and from your looking perspective, you are looking at the instrument, you want the bell to be in your left hand, and then the slide to be in your right hand, okay? So then, whenever we put the two together, magical things happen, <laughs> and we just give it a nice little push, a little twist, and then, hear that? That's the part that actually screws in and connects them, okay? So we want to make sure that that threads in that just twists right on down. Want to make sure that it's nice and tight. And then, there we go, we have the trombone. Awesome. It's wonderful. And then now right. we can, oh my gosh, wait, I can't forgot. even make any sounds. See, again, flute player. You don't have mouthpieces. So right. <laughs> we just put it in, give a nice little, little tiny turn. And then magical things can arise. Uh -huh. Yep. I'm not going to play because it's going to sound not. like this. Oh, come on. But how do you make a sound in a trombone? We'll get to that. <laughs> Darn. Okay. So that's the basic, for, you know, introduction to what we're going to be doing here. Hopefully, <laughs> there we go. Thank you. <laughs> and as as the coming weeks come, we'll be doing more in depth things on each one of the instruments, right? Yes. We'll be showing you how to clean them. Little maintenance stuff, nothing serious, nothing too serious, but little maintenance stuff that you can do to make sure your instrument's playing up to snuff and all that kind of things. So, um, yeah. we will be putting out new videos of this series every single Wednesday um, on our YouTube channel. So make sure that you subscribe and then hit the little notification yeah, bell, hit the bell. If, if you want to know when these videos come out, just to remind yourself. Right. Um, there's gonna be a lot of cool things. If you are a teacher and um, you wanna use this as a resource, maybe. That's up to you. That's super cool. If you're a student watching this video, even cooler. If you're a parent watching this video, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, we just love people watching things and learning a little bit more about the instrument that they're going to be playing. Yeah. Yeah. You see the comments below? Yeah. The comments below. Right down there. Yeah. Whatever you want to see in the series, leave us a comment below and we'll look at those and we'll, we'll add those things in to what we're doing. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. So thank you for watching this video and we hope to see you next time. Um, and always stay amazing. That works. We'll be back with more penny whistles. Right. Thanks.